Welcome to our special edition of Litter Media Live, focusing on Pickaway County, and we have a Pickaway County in with us. Hey, it's good to be here again. We had a lot of fun. Uh, when was I here last time? It was uh, spring. in the spring, yeah. yeah. I think it was, yeah. John Halley, by the way, of Sporting Pumpkin. want to make sure we properly introduce okay. you. Thank you. And uh, appreciate you coming back. No, it's a lot. I, of course, I've known you guys way before Litter Media days, but always a good time hanging out with you guys. And When you saw Tom Wilson back, he said, hey, I want some equal time. That's right. <laughs> No, we actually reached out to John's. That we did, and uh, we we need to play a commercial. So we'll take a commercial break and then get back and talk about Pickaway County High School sports for fall. So that's all just ahead right after this from Classic Brands. You haven't had vodka soda like this. No one has. Made with the world's smoothest vodka plus real juice. New White Claw Vodka Soda. You'd use a cool drink on a day like today, right? Mm. Uh, wow. It's hot. Say, I don't know where these, uh, who the idea it was to make these seltzer drinks, but if they're not making a billion dollars off that <laughs> over the last, what, five, ten years, it seems oh, like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we probably shouldn't be talking about that on talking about high school sports. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's for mom and dad, not yeah. for the kids. Yeah, that's, yeah. True. Yeah. that's true. That's true. Um, where do we want to start here? I mean, we, we've got, we started with golf and tennis already up and mm-hmm. running. Football's had its first weekend. Volleyball's been playing. Soccer's been up and running. Is there anything left? I mean, cross country's running Cross also? countries. Yeah. They don't, they, they started yet. Uh, that I, I might I, be, I know like the big Qantas meets, that's a big Circleville true. meet like yeah. around Labor Day weekend. That's kind of like the big kickoff. Like, kind of I think maybe last weekend I saw there were some, some, some runners. runners, but yeah, they're, they're, Probably Everything the last one to get going. Yeah. yeah, of course, golf starts the first day because it isn't like you need a lot yeah. of uh, two-a-days to get ready oh, for yeah. golf. In fact, uh, well, let's just start with golf. Uh, I think in the MSL, you've got, what, three three down now and however many to go. I think the boys have got two in. Do the girls, the, the girl, I don't think the girls have got a second one in yeah, yet. Yeah, I think it's just one. Just the one. So, But they play four. Um, yeah, and like on the, the boys' side, it's super tight because uh, – um, was it Taze? Uh, Taze won the first one, and Bloom won the second. Fairfield was second in both, and Taze and Bloom were third in the opposite. So, assuming they do the normal scoring like that, it's like two teams tied for first with the second one a point behind. It's like you know, it could be nip and tuck all the it's way. It's crazy, yeah. And uh, and you look at it, so it's like those guys have great teams, and the uh, Will Higginbotham from Logan Elm, he was the medalist in the first match, and I think he was, yeah, medalist in the second match as well. Um, or he tied for medalist in the first match. And uh, Logan Elm, not as strong a team, so they've, I think they finished fifth. Um, he had a 77, I think, a second one, yeah. second meet. Yeah. So he's uh, so obviously a real good individual there. And, um, yeah, so – and Taze was second in the league last year. Uh, they got a lot of guys back. I mean, a lot of guys with varsity experience and – and, and just some good young golfers. So I'd imagine Taze and Bloom will fight it out um, all the way to the end. So Circleville's got a lot of guys back from the last couple seasons, but they're struggling to score to get up in the standings. But they're, they're out there putting it in now. On the, and, of course, uh, on the Westfall, it's like this for instance, we have the four schools mm-hmm. that we cover that are in the MSL, then Westfall's in the SVC, which you guys, a lot more of your viewers are familiar with. But uh, – They've done all right. They uh, they won that first match. They beat Unioda by nine, which is always mm. a pretty big accomplishment. Oh, yeah. They had home field advantage. That didn't hurt. Being they played at Crown Hill, but uh, still get that win. And it was a nice stroke win over Unioda, who's always you know, a good <laughs> It team. doesn't happen very often. <laughs> in the SBC <laughs> golf, exactly. They'll take it no matter where it's at, no matter how many strokes. So, so yeah, it's a you know, the good good start to the, to the boys' golf season. And uh, – on the girls' side, woof, mm-hmm. that Circleville team yeah. is uh, mm-hmm. kicking butt and taking names if you can kick butt in golf because <laughs> uh, they, uh, I mean, they won the first uh, mid-state league match by 44 shots. Wow. I mean, wow. 44, Taze Valley was second. They were 44 shots behind uh, Circleville. Um well, let's just stick with uh, their swinging clubs and sinking putts. There we go. <laughs> the there we go. That's, that's, that yeah. sounds like a good way yeah. to do it. And they're setting program records for the girls at Circleville in doing all of that. Yeah, pretty much every time they go out, it's like they have a new 18-hole record. They have a new nine-hole record. They've done that three or four times this year, I think. Um, and uh, was it uh, Elena Seeley oh, is, yeah. is leading them. She's, she's medaled a couple, you know, 73, 72. 
think what you said. 69. Down in the 60s, yeah. So, 68 the other day, yeah. Uh, her sister, Izzy, and, like, Is- Isabella Perini, they're, like, a couple other top players that are really scoring for them. Um, they got a really strong core group, I think. And last year they just came in second at the districts to Westfall to, to miss going to the state because mm-hmm. Southeast only gets one team to the state. So uh, that's their mission this year is they're, they they want to get up to – to Ohio State. It and sounds I, like they are on a mission right now. Yeah, so they're yeah they're doing obviously really good. And, uh, um, of course, talking about Westfall, uh, made it to the state last mm-hmm. year for, like, I think it was the third time third in year, program yeah. history. Um, and uh, they'd lost a couple of their, you know, they'd lost a couple of golfers, but Paige Weiss is still back there leading them. Um, so they were, you know, they finished seventh in the state as a team last year. And they started off SVC with a 20-shot win over Piketon. So, I mean, they're mm-hmm. – they're, uh, Going right there, I know Paige and Elena. They played uh, this summer on the was it the Junior Southern Ohio PGA. Yeah. So for those of you who, uh, even if you aren't subscribing to SportingPumpkin.com, make sure you do because Brad's got a feature playing with them mm-hmm. for next week to see a little more about how those two young ladies have you know their summer and how they're approaching this this fall golf season. So we look for a lot of big things out of them. And if you haven't noticed, you'll see Sporting Pumpkin scrolling across the top in the, the screen here, so you'll find the web address right there. And if you don't want to have to type it into your URL all the time, you can hit the subscribe button. Every time a new story goes up, it'll pop into your email. Nice. So just make a special email account just for Sporting Pumpkin stories, and you won't have to go searching for them. Fall is the time for, uh, in tennis, it's girls. The boys mm-hmm. play in the spring. Uh MSL have a full slate of tennis in the fall. Yeah, they do. I think I think pretty much. I think all eight or about seven. I'm not sure if I'm, I don't think Amanda has a girls tennis team. I think everybody else does. Um, yeah, so like uh, Taze Valley's got three um, second team all league players coming back. They finished third in the MSL Buckeye. Um, Logan Elm was uh, second last year, but they would lost five of their top seven players Ooh. to graduation. That was kind of obvious. They, they met up at Taze Valley the other night, and Taze took them 5-0. So, um, so a little – they're – like, Logan Elm's a little short on experience. Taze Valley's pretty good on experience. So, um, we'll see how that translates comes the end of the season. Westfall does not have girls' tennis. I do not – I don't think they've ever had any tennis programs. Mm-hmm. So, they just went, added soccer. I guess the 10th season for their boys' soccer, maybe, or girls' soccer. So, right. Yeah. Well, let's dovetail into that. Soccer. Yeah. So it's uh, not the strongest sport in the area, but we've got some pretty good teams. Uh, it's interesting now in girls this year because some the reshifting of the Mid-State League was at the Ohio Conference. They kind of left to join, to reform. I forget what the old league was called. The Licking County League? I don't – Something like that? I yeah. know some did go that direction. Yeah, yeah. they <clears> – <throat> group of them left. So there's actually 11 schools competing – for the uh, Mid-State League title in girls' soccer. Mm. So I think it's just they're just doing the one. Uh, along with the eight Buckeye schools, we've got Bishop Rosecrans, Fisher Catholic, and Wellington, who are in the Cardinal, um, are competing with uh, the Buckeye schools for, um, yeah, for, for the girls' title. And those are girls' teams that we are normally seeing in late October when they jump into the, the postseason. Yeah, we generally have – we've had some pretty good success over the years with um, – with uh, girls soccer, I know uh, it's been down a little bit recently. Like uh, uh, Amanda Clear Creek, they were fifth last year in the league. Uh, they graduated six starters, including their leading scorer, so that's going to be a little tough. And um, they do have an up first team all league player coming back in Rachel Weaver that'll help. Mm-hmm. Taze was third last year. Um, they graduated a large part of their, their scoring. But they got a good group of under class or of underclassmen or upperclassmen coming back. Um, Jason Herbert, longtime coach in the area. Circleville for a long time, Taze for a long time now, too. He just it's, reached a milestone, didn't he? I think he, he – most wins at a at a Taze Valley as, oh, a, I'm sure, as yeah. a soccer coach. Yeah. He's probably this – I mean, th- he does a good job up there, plus he's got the tenure, so yeah. that helps, too. His mm-hmm. daughter is one of the, uh, Brooklyn's a pretty good player, so it's one of their key returners. Um, Circleville was fifth in the – or tied fifth in the league last year. They, they lost their leading score to graduation, but um, – uh, among their key returners is Faith Yancey, who that name should sound familiar. Yes. Pretty good basketball player, mm-hmm. and she's been on the podium at the state track meet the last mm-hmm. couple of years. So she's pretty quick. Um, and then they've got uh, 12 freshmen on the team. Wow. So that's a – Yeah. 
that's always a big question mark. You get that many young young yeah. people on the team, so we'll see how uh, how they work into the to the system. And if nothing else, if uh, keep them interested and keep them developing, that bodes well for the future mm-hmm. at Circleville. So um, Logan Elm struggled last year. They were uh, oh and oh seven and one in the league. They do have five uh, players coming back who were uh, earned a, one or another level of all league and all district honors. So. They got 10 or 11 starters back and nine seniors, so hmm. we'll see how this – that experience before, I mean, um, see if that translates into a little better better record this year. Mm-hmm. So Now, on the boys' side, um, we were talking about Circleville a while ago. Did they – sometimes you'll see soccer players – It's especially with the smaller schools, it's hard to play more than one sport. Right. But it's not uncommon at all to see a soccer player be your place kicker, or your field goal kicker, or whatever. And we're seeing that out. from the girls now, too. Yes, well, that's right. Funny you should mention that because, uh, oh, I've got her name down there somewhere. It's um, uh, Peyton Ford, Peyton, P-A-Y, not P-E-Y, mm-hmm. like some boys would be, but Peyton Ford from the girls' team is Circle Bowl's kicker this year. Well, we mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So, unfortunately, she did not get a chance to kick in the game right. last week. It did not go well that well for them. But, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Because we've had, well, I know a couple teams recently. I remember one that long ago, Zane Trace had a young lady kicking for him. Uh, mm-hmm. Taze Valley had a young lady who kicked uh, mainly JV. She get she they put her in a couple times for um, some varsity kicks mm-hmm. their senior year. But uh, so yeah, so so that's always interesting. Because and the nice thing about that is, look, we need you for one job. <laughs> so you don't don't worry <laughs> if you missed right. the defensive practice or didn't get. Get, make film session. Yeah, <laughs> we need you to be a good kicker, kick it straight, mm-hmm. and get to the uprights. I remember years ago, Ron Hinton always complaining about soccer until he discovered these guys can be kick. field goal kickers. And <laughs> That's then right. Like, this is a great thing. Yeah, you yeah. Can, you can kick a round ball. Can, what about longer points <laughs> on it? Right. right? Yeah. And, we're, and we're even going to hold it for you. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you don't have to like just so. Yeah, so soccer. I mean, yeah, once you once you embrace. You don't have, it doesn't have to be an adversary. Embrace it. Uh, there was a kid, uh, <laughs> this was in the 90s at Taze, but he was the, the goalie during the week, place kicker on Friday night, and then on wintertime he was one of the better uh, probably, you know, shooting forwards or going around mm-hmm. in basketball. And then just for, for the kicks, he played tennis in the spring. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drew Basil, during his days at Chillicothe, uh, played soccer, was all Ohio soccer, all Ohio for football, mm-hmm. place kicking, all Ohio bowler during the mm-hmm. wintertime. And, and so it, it can happen. <laughs> yes. It really and that's can. what, you know, I mean, obviously that kicking and, you know, you're not playing two sports full out in a, yeah. in a season, but, yeah, you know, it's different discussion. But when they, you know, tell these kids you got to specialize and yeah. whatever, it's like, oh, yeah. you know, and and a lot of recruiters your soccer are looking players, for well-rounded athletes. Absolutely. Your soccer players will be the best conditioned athletes oh, on your football run, team. Run, run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so keep that in mind as yeah, well. Exactly. But yeah, like on the on on the boys' side, uh, Taze was second in the league last year, and they returned um, a couple all league players. They were eleven and five and one overall. So uh, see how they do. You know, um, Amanda has get, bringing one kid back who was uh, first team all league and all district. They were. Three and four in the league. Logan Elm was one and five. Um, and over the last two seasons, Logan Elm's gradu- graduated 17 players. So, uh, But they are bringing wow. six of their eight top returners back. They're in the junior class, and they got a group of freshmen that are they're expecting to contribute. So um, could be another learning year, but with some a bright future. Circleville's kind of an interesting story. They were one and 15 last year. Um, I think a friend of mine, her son's on the team, and she was posting about this much longer. They had maybe 13, 14 kids on the roster last year. Mm-hmm. Well, Evan Callahan, who used to be mm-hmm. the girls' soccer coach, and then last year he went to Waverly as the boys' basketball coach, since come back to Circleville, and now he's the um, boys' coach. I think they have, like, about 30-some kids out for the team. Wow. Ooh. So uh, <laughs> maybe actually have a JV program yeah. and, mm-hmm. and get some. So that that's always exciting when you see kids coming back out and want to be part of it. So um, That's how you build a program. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, congratulations to Evan, and, and I'm sure he'll improve on that that one in fifteen from last year. So, mm-hmm. it'll be it'll be interesting to see how they do. Cross country, yeah. Um, Westfall boys, they're going they're going to be the the cream of the crop. It sounds like for the county, uh, 
they've got their top six and nine of their top ten runners back. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can't imagine, you know, you don't generally get slower as yeah. you get older. Mm-hmm. Well, well, until you get to a certain age. <laughs> I was going to say, we're not <laughs> At this quite age, as fast not as we used Dan to be. And I run. That's right. Oh, <laughs> I haven't run in years. Uh, but, yes, at this age, they generally do not slow down between, you know, junior and senior season. So, so they ought to be tearing it up. Um, I'm sure the SVC is not happy about that. Um, you think they can make a, no pun intended, run at Uniota? I, well, you know, that kind of experience, it's like, uh, I mean, they're going to be tight. That's just that top pack, you know. When you get your team run together as a pack up front, your scores, it's so much easier to push. And when you're by yourself and different colored jerseys around you, the motivation's a little different. But when it's, yeah. when it's your teammates all around you, it's, I think it's a little easier to push. And I, I'd, I'd say that you're going to see some, some really good efforts out of the Westfall boys this year. And on the girls' side, they've got um, senior Caitlin Shipley, who's gone to the state meet three times. So, mm-hmm. yeah, enough said there. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Circleville, uh, they got two-time state qualifier, Maddox Bigham. Um, she's gone to the you – know, and she made the, to the state track meet this year – or last year for the first time, last school year. So, then on the boys' side, they've got a couple seniors returning, but they've got a young young people – you know, a lot of younger runners on the – for Circleville, so – and unfortunately, don't have a lot of information on some of the other programs right this time. But we'll be seeing them pretty quick, mm-hmm. you know, because they'll be out there sweating and don't blink. They'll yeah, run right why by. Do you, yeah. Why does anybody decide it's fun to run three miles? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes on these courses, it's uphill, oh, yeah. downhill. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I like the uh, uh, the Westfall coach for saying because he gave him some information to Brad for some previews. Is like. Not a lot of hills in the Westfall area. <laughs> yeah. The west side of the Soda River is pretty mm-hmm. flat. Yeah. So that's one of the things they got to work on. So I don't know if he's, if he's working on that with some of the meets or just taking them someplace, different places to practice. Cause I remember that's why you, you run down towards the river and then you <laughs> run back up. Uh, exactly. Because yeah. yeah. back in the day, uh, now Circleville runs their home meets around the high school, but they used to run them at Hargis Lake. Yeah. Oh. And there were a couple of big hills. Mm-hmm. I mean, you ran a good time at Hargis Lake. You were, it's like they, were, uh, they had a little at home advantage home field advantage when right. people came to run at Circleville. So, But now they run on the high school, which has still got a little bit of elevation, but not anything like that used to be. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, as a Bowling Green graduate, if anybody's ever been up, uh, was that 75, you'll see the one hill by the golf course. <laughs> that was, I think, just dirt they pushed when they were building the interstate. <laughs> the cross-country course, they used that three times because that's like the only hills in yeah. Bowling Green. So. Wow. But, yeah, but I digress with the – getting to the college there. But, no, yeah, so we're looking forward to the big things from some of those kids because they've, they've shown they can do it in the past, and let's just see how much they can take it to the next step. And mm-hmm. Two more sports to cover. What about volleyball? Yeah, vol- uh, you know, of course, you're familiar with the SVC, so I don't need to talk too much about that. But, you know, Westfall was fourth last year in the SVC, and they got three players back who earned, you know, all SVC at some point. So, um, look to see how, how they can uh, – build on that and if they can take that to the next level of course fourth in the svc is nothing to sneeze at right it's for ever that's just been one heck of a volleyball mm-hmm. conference so it is tough to move up in that division so um you know best of luck to them over there coming over to the mid-state league you know you were talking with tom about this last week but bloom carroll is obviously going to be really good um you know we look at the schools that we cover amanda was eighth last year in the league they struggle, but they got their core group back who's been together for a couple of years. So um, they've got that experience. Is can they take mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. and, and you know, piece some wins together with it? Taze Valley was seventh last year in the in the conference. Um, they, you know, a big loss is Morgan Keel graduated, and she was 2,000 career assists. That's, yeah. uh, that's nothing to slack. Right. slack. But they're, uh, Kennedy Yunkin, who you guys, you guys talked to or you mm-hmm. talked to a little bit ago, she's headed to East Tennessee State for basketball. She's um, – Kind of leading that group of the four, they got four uh, starters coming back. So a new be head good. coach this year. Yeah, uh, they yeah, do have a so. they have a new head coach. Uh, Alyssa Horsley is uh, she's a Taze Valley alum, and I cannot remember her maiden name, but uh, her she's had daughters coming up through playing mm-hmm. uh, basketball. So that'll be good. Some uh, a hometown kid kind of help these girls get to the next level. You know, Logan Elm was fourth last year in the league, um, and very young. Yeah, very young. Yeah. Right. Uh, so they got three players who earned all league. Uh, sophomore Claire King had mm-hmm. 308 kills as a freshman last year, second wow. team all district. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say she's better this year. Uh, I'd say you're right. Yeah, Because right. uh, these girls do not take time off, so I can only imagine what her summer schedule was like with travel teams or whatever. But I would imagine – and that's just going to do nothing but uh, help the Braves and make them uh, a formidable opponent. Uh, Circleville was second last year to, to Bloom. Um, they lost, you know, some big, big-time players, but they bring back, uh, uh, you know, Gabby McConnell, who's a hitter and setter. Mm-hmm. She got her 1,000th assists last year during the tournament. Um, they've also got a new coach, old coach, new coach. Uh, Crystal Thornsley returns. Mm-hmm. Crystal helmed the program for quite a while. Um, and she's been involved with some low, lower levels. Uh, her daughter's a freshman. Um, there's a couple other really good freshmen on that team that are coming up. So Circleville will be interesting um, because they, they did lose a lot, but they got some good young kids to mix in with a couple – um, experienced quality returners, so they no no reason why they shouldn't be right there at the top of the top of the league standings again. Yep. It leaves us with Friday night football. Yeah. So uh, we were joking before we started. Do we want to start with our little media game of the week? Well, matchup? yeah. Terry Holbert, the dean of Pickaway <laughs> County coaches. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> He's got old us. man. <laughs> That's right. Just because the way I think we got because there's uh, what uh, one new coach at Taze. Second year coach at Westfall, and then Steve Evans, who maybe if you add up his time and pick away, <laughs> right? A couple stints at Tays, he can uh, he'll make a run at, at Terry, but but Tays Valley's first year coach has been around oh, a while. Yeah. Oh, Ryan yeah, Cross, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, years. yeah, so the game of the week though, you guys got what, uh, Logan. I'm going to Westfall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of them coming off wins last week, so that's a, that's great. That's great to see. Uh, um, Logan Elm was eight and three last year. They went into the, you know, made it to the playoffs, uh, went over to Cambridge, um, lost that game. They were real balanced last year. They were uh, 1,900 yards rushing, 1,700 yards passing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't get a whole lot more balanced than that. But um, one of their big losses is uh, Blayton Reed graduated. He was our Pickway County Player of the Year. He was first team All Ohio, ran for 301 yards against Fairfield Union the one night. Um, uh, so he uh, he was just on stop bland, middle linebacker. I mean, what a great kid, um, four year varsity guy. So uh, uh, that was that's a big loss. But uh, to watch them, I was out there when they played Zane Trace Friday night. Um, Aaron Walters is back. He's the uh, he was quarterback last season. He uh, threw for seventeen touchdowns last year. Uh, I imagine that number is going to go up because um, he's already got three. He threw for 277, 23 for 31, I think it was. Uh, pretty accurate. Got some really good receivers in Carson Summers, um, who had 99 yards receiving, a touchdown, and an interception return for a touchdown. Cam Smith caught a touchdown, ran with 93 yards, and he had two interceptions in the third quarter. Wow. Did not return those for touchdowns, but we'll let that go. <laughs> but I think them from school. But I think he also uh, – had about 100 yards in uh, return yardage between kickoffs and the interceptions. So mm. he was a, a little a Mr. Everything um, for them last week. So, so Logan Elm, um, yeah, eight and three, six and one last year. Some, some couple key losses, but man, that's like they're ready to go again and make another run at that. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. And of course, Westfall, Logan Stepp is a second year head coach, um, you know, working with the Mustangs. They were two and eight last year, um, rebuilding that program. He's getting the numbers up. Um, which is good to see that bodes well for the future, but that means you don't have a lot of upperclassmen. So, mm-hmm. but he brought Bryce Wickline and made him the quarterback last year. Um, of course, Bryce is a heck of an athlete, wrestler, and uh, um, he threw for two thousand yards last year, ran for four hundred more, twenty four touchdowns, and uh, so. And then they just they started off against what Madison Plains Friday night had four hundred yards on the ground. Just uh, Joey Wright had 263, so mm-hmm. that, uh, granted, probably not going to happen every night. Right. But uh, what a way to get the season started. So I've already planned I have to lace my shoes really tight <laughs> for this weekend. I might even have to get the ankles taped. I don't know. <laughs> because you're like, when they make that long run, you're like, just score, so I don't have to run down there and see what's going on. <laughs> right. I'm too old for this. So if you're going to go 50 yards, just go to the last five. <laughs> uh, yeah, may as well. <laughs> or at least wait long enough for me to catch my breath <laughs> and catch up. And so. Yeah, because even, uh, um, oh, who was it? Uh, Trent Walters had a 100-yard interception return for them mm. last week. So oh. uh, they were getting it done in all facets of the game. And, of course, the – 
and defense did a good job keeping Madison Plains under control. So yeah. And one thing to note, since just anybody, they, they're doing a uh, um, reunion for the 1983 undefeated football team. Mm. Oh. Uh, not this week, but next week when Circleville comes over. Mm-hmm. Uh, go on Facebook, look up Westfall football undefeated. Um, they're going to do something at halftime, uh, is my understanding. They're looking for all any of the old uh, hmm. players, cheerleaders, whoever hmm. was involved with the team back in 1983. It was their first undefeated SVC championship team. Mm-hmm. So they had a couple more since then, but that was the yeah. first one. So that's kind of pretty cool. So now the players are old. You can't call the cheerleaders old. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can't do that. No, no. Well, they were all you know <laughs> five years old when they were cheerleading. Yes, no. that's what we'll say. So no, so yeah, so the game of the week that ought, that'd be pretty exciting. I will not be at that one, but I mm. I'm looking forward to hearing how that uh, that one turns out. So, but yeah, we talked about the first year head coach Taze Valley, um, Brian Cross comes in, and man, that guy's got a record. Uh, mm-hmm. He is in the Hall of Fame, yeah. you know, coaches Hall of Fame, so you know he's legit. Two hundred forty-eight, one hundred forty-six uh, career record. Um, he went. He's been at McCant McKinley. OCC schools, Grove City, and Olentangy Orange, among others. Um, so, and th- that OCC experience is, is really big because obviously this is Taze's last year in the Mid State yeah. League. They will be in the OCC next year. So, he, he understands those programs and he knows what it'll take to get that, get those Vikings uh, prepared. Um, there's some really good teams in that division they're going to be in. So, um, it's going to be, it's going to be a battle, but. That's what you expect when you go to the OCC. So, uh, had a chance to work with Brian when Chillicothe was in the Ohio Capital Conference and meeting them through Grove City. Mm-hmm. Super nice guy, you know, and, and very cooperative with the media. I, I hope you've had the same experience or will have the same experience yeah. this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get, I haven't, uh, also I did the Logan Elm game this first week, uh, try to get out there in a couple of weeks to, to, to see the Vikings, and i um, super excited. He's going to open up the offense a little bit, um, run more of a spread. Um, editorialize, you know, about the last couple of years, they really under underutilized some of the talent they had on that team with the, the scheme. So it'll be exciting. They got some young kids at key positions. Um, Cole Nungister was a sophomore. He was a receiver last year, started last year as a receiver. He's now their starting quarterback. Mm-hmm. And the backup quarterback is also a sophomore. So, um, so he'll be getting those guys ready. And there, Cole's obviously a very good athlete. Was a starter on the basketball team as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad to see that he uh, um, is starting because last when I saw him, and I was out to school, and he was his dad was taking him to the doctor's appointment. He's on crutches from his one of his uh, AAU teammates took his knee out. Oh my! Ooh. Like a week or two after the season, <laughs> the season wow. was over. So obviously, all that went very well. Mm, so all that recovery went very well. So <laughs> we're glad to see that. Um, Harrison Payne is their top receiver. He came; he's a senior. He had 51 catches for just shy of 700 yards last year. Uh, really, really great receiver. So, um, so I imagine him and he's Nungister's best friend, or mm-hmm. wants to be. So he gets sure. keeps that up. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and I think they they struggled a little bit against Lancaster the other night. I think Harrison did have all their catches, um, but they did not. Uh, they only had 131 yards of offense. So they were struggling to get things going, which Lancaster's you know decent team. It's, it's they're getting used to that for the uh, mm-hmm. they'll be in their division when they go to the OCC next right. year. So um, a good taste of what they're what they're going to be looking at. So and they'll be facing Logan here pretty soon. Yeah, and, they, they got Logan this week. Logan will Logan's. be in the OCC with them as well. Yeah. So and that's one of the so they they the OCC has their, for their schedule instead of automatic rotations. The last week's always going to be a. Rivalry week, mm-hmm. so week ten and Taze Valley and Logan are, Ooh. they're the pre pre assigned uh, mm-hmm. rivals. Rivals. So they'll that'll be week ten for uh, the Vikings basically going forward until the OCC mm-hmm. decides to change that. When you see the uh, Logan football team this weekend on the backs of their helmets, there oh. is a decal that says CD, and that's for Craig Dunn, our buddy who uh, passed away this summer. But uh, he is a fellow who was nothing but Logan oh, sports mm. through and through for 40-plus years. Oh, yeah. I think if you had a question about something that went on with Logan sports, Craig was the guy because yeah. even when, uh, you know, for a long time there at the local paper and then when he's, he's everything else, is everything changes, him and a group of folks from the old paper started their online, the Logan Hawking Times, and uh, they so just to keep right up and 
Hmm. Yeah, Craig loved everything Logan, so that was and it was just real shocker to hear that when he yeah. passed away. Yeah. But uh so yeah, so we go to uh oh another first year coach, not in the county, but just right over the border, Chet Som takes over the Amanda Clare Creek program. Mm-hmm. Uh of course Chet's a native son, yeah. so uh, you know, one of their own and Struggled last year, 0 and 10, with probably the youngest team they've probably ever put on the field. They had a lot mm-hmm. of, a lot of young kids playing. Um, it was their first undefeated or un, un, yeah, non-winning season mm-hmm. since 1973. So, oh my. but they got that taken care of Friday night, and they beat Linda McKinley, coached by another um, Amanda alum, Eric Valentine. Um, they 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 got that game going. So uh, when that 38 to six Friday night, so they got that yeah. taken care of right away. Yeah. And they said it was just packed over there. It's like probably mm-hmm. the hillsides were full and the bleachers were full. And, <laughs> Pit, um, they call it. Yeah. Yes. The the reason a man has got a reputation for being a tough place to play, that's why. Because when they get yep. – the fans get excited, the place yeah. is full and it's loud. So that that's really good to hear. And, and we wish Chet the best. Like, I know they, they're still pretty young. Um, so – but he wants to try to get that old mm-hmm. man. He, he was a Ron Hinton player. So yep. And he's got Ron Hinton back with him. Oh, Ron's out. I, open out as well. Yeah. Okay, I knew yeah. a lot of those. A lot of those guys stick around, and and you know, if I don't think it'd be hard to figure out the last time there was not a Hinton doing something on the <laughs> yeah. sideline over there yeah. between Ron and the brothers, and then the, now the, yeah. the kids and the whatever. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, a family that loves football and and loves helping the kids over there. So that's just great to see that. Um, hopefully, Chet's building that up, get the numbers up again. Mm-hmm. So. I don't expect to see Ron when you go to a game on Friday night. He's going to be with Chillicothe because of his grandson Miles playing. So, yeah, Cavaliers. That's understandable. Yeah, well, yeah got a little line yeah. of that. Now we we touched on, but we didn't really get in depth with Circleville. Yeah. So uh, Steve Evans, an Amanda grad, mm-hmm. um, he's in his third year with the Tigers now, uh, and uh, yeah, third year, I think. Right. Yeah. I believe that's correct. Yeah, third yes. year. All these years run together. <laughs> Tom Wilson said it was his 31st year covering sports. This is my 30th football season. Basketball will be season 31. So wow. I've been doing this for a while as well. And sometimes the years run together. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But they were 5-6 and six last year, uh, kind of backed into the playoffs. Um, so that was exciting for the kids. They had to go over to play Sheridan, which not as exciting as making the playoffs. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it, it is what it is. It gave a lot of those kids uh, some good experience. Um, they did graduate like their – starting quarterback and some other key players. Uh, so they got a, a, a sophomore who's starting at quarterback in Hudson Phelan. Um, so they got good numbers, though. They got about 45 players out. And we mentioned already that uh, the young ladies coming over from the soccer team to be their place kicker. Right. So that'll be exciting to see how that goes. And uh, they, they, they struggled to get their offense going. They only had uh, 82 yards offense Friday night. Mm. So um, they got a pretty good Vinton County team coming in Friday night. So we'll see how they bounce back. But. I know Steve. He's got him. He's trained him up and uh, got the kids excited about Friday night. So it'll be should be fun for him. Yeah. I guess that that That's gets everybody in uh, Fairfield County and and of course Amanda just across the uh, Pickaway County. Pickaway County and Amanda's across. The Fairfield's <laughs> Fairfield, but or pick or Amanda's <laughs> Fairfield, but they're almost like a Pickaway County school. Well, because Stoutsville is like from. Downtown Circleville, I think it's like 13 miles to get to Westfall High School mm. and 13 miles to get to Amanda Clare yeah. Creek High School. Yeah. And Stoutsville is, you know, obviously even closer because it's right there on the county line. Um, so somewhere along the way, before I got there, they they started – the Circleville Herald was covering, you know, Amanda plus the four county schools. And so that's just what we do. Yeah. They're part of – we. I mean, as, other than like when it comes time for the all-county awards, they're part of everything we do. So. Right. Let me ask then, uh, New Hope Christian Academy, do they have any fall sports? We they've know got, they play basketball, but. They've got, some, they've got soccer and volleyball. Um, I know, uh, I think uh, they uh, matched up. With, they played a circle the other night in soccer. Mm-hmm. Was that, they, they draw that game? I think it was. I think it was a draw, yeah. So, uh, um, and then they've got volleyball. And, like, last year their volleyball team made the uh, – uh, I think, it, I think it, yeah, I was out there for the semifinal. I think they won their their Christian school tournament. So, not not a lot of schools, but probably about sixteen in the Christian school association around the state. So, uh, not a huge pool of ter- for tournament, but still, nonetheless, you know, mm-hmm. they took on the competition that was in front of them and took care of it. So, uh, yeah, they I think they're really only lacking like a, maybe one or 
two more varsity sports to be able to join the OHSA because you have to have varsity sports and like I think for at every season and Correct. so I think they're missing they're missing out on the spring. Yep. So that's what keeps them from uh, joining the OHSAA. But uh, so yeah, so the new kids out in New Hope uh, playing some volleyball, and playing some soccer. So. Mm-hmm. And I know this is primarily high school focused, but you've got Ohio Christian University mm-hmm. in your backyard that also has a lot of sports. Yeah, and they have they got great facilities out there. Obviously, you know they host uh, the Christian School Association. All their state tournaments, or pretty much all their state tournaments, are hosted out at OCU, which of course is a great recruiting yeah. tool for them. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, so they 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 bring in a lot of they have a lot of local kids on their teams, but they bring in uh, kids from around the state and. Uh, around the area, like I was at a graduation party outside of Toledo and met a guy whose kid was coming to play basketball from Anthony Wayne. He was coming that, to play at OCU. So yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. might have to pop out there this winter and see, Take see how he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's a it's a great facility out there. It's probably – and, you know, just because of everything else, we don't do a lot. We don't do really do anything with OCU because it is college. We focus on high school. But um, it is kind of like a little hidden gem in the county. Mm-hmm. That a lot of people – they kind of know it's there, but they don't don't really quite know mm-hmm. what all's going out there. But there's a lot of yeah, they got they got a lot of things going on out there. Yeah. The Trailblazers, yes. Yeah. And a number of area high school graduates are going into that school and participating in their sports programs. Oh yeah, so they been they've they they, they give a lot of local kids opportunities, and uh, so that, that's always great to see that anytime you can. And you know, I don't know exactly how the financial aid works out at that level, but anytime you get a little help with college, mom and dad are sure are very happy. You've mm-hmm. got to believe it. <laughs> it, has, it has not gotten any cheaper over the no, years. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> I think it uh, is all the sports that we know of that uh, Pickaway County will. We, we didn't touch on esports, but no, uh, that's down the road. <laughs> I know Circleville's got a robotics team. Yeah. Because the neighbor kid was on that a couple years ago when he was in school. I don't know exactly how much competing they do, but. They got a robotics class and they do some things and pickleball is not a thing for kids now. It's no, just old but people. That, it is. There's a lot of old people playing pickleball. They got some new courts. I think out to uh, uh, Bartholomew's Park mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. people just talk about putting. I think Asheville's going to put some in. Or they're talking about it. You know, yeah. so pickleball is a thing. It's growing. And the way things take off in Asheville, just like the truck festival, uh, uh, food, no, truck, food truck. Yeah, they'll, they'll have a pickleball festival. <laughs> that, I, that I could, could see be. that happening. So, and not too far away is the. Pumpkin show. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you, that's always a fun time for everybody to get together. And and the weird part is now is that's pumpkin show is the last week of high school football season. Yeah. Oh. Because yeah. they've – as obviously they just keep moving mm-hmm. it up because they added that extra round of the football playoff. So yeah. mm-hmm. week 10 is – and it might not be that every every year, but right now week, week 10 is falling on pumpkin show week. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, that for Pickaway County Schools is almost like the Fairfield County Fair is – it's, right. it's almost like a pause in the middle of their sports yes. seasons yeah. because a lot of the schools let out. Yeah, like I think like a lot of the Fairfield County schools, the, at least the rural ones, are out like the whole week, I believe. Mm-hmm. Pretty much all the, the Pickaway County schools are either out two or three days. Um, and, yeah, I, back in the day, in the old build school days, Larry Cook at Circleville, you were not allowed to hunt. The, those football <laughs> players were not allowed to go to pumpkin show until Friday night they got back from the game. Uh-huh. They got caught. Mm. And no then, pumpkin pie before the game. Exactly. <laughs> it was it, it was it was serious, and they weren't allowed to go to pumpkin show and screw around. And that's a great name, Mr. Cook, Coach yeah. Cook. Wow, I, I mm. can remember doing the old Jim Pay and Save remotes <laughs> on Saturday morning, and he was always talking about Coach Cook and what they did the night before. But yeah, yeah there's another Hall of Famer from years past. Oh yeah, Larry, he went up to Upper Sandusky and. Uh, <laughs> One of his, uh, you might remember a little guy named Orlando Pace. Orlando Pace. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of his high school Little players. guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was one of his players at, up at uh, Sandusky. So, yeah, Larry uh, mm. Larry was quite the legend, and he had a lot of good years at Circleville and then, of course, went on and just kept yeah. kept getting it done up at Sandusky. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we appreciate you coming down yeah. and yeah. sharing information. Uh, again, sportingpumpkin.com is where you want to go. Subscribe. That's right. It comes right to your email box. You'll get that right there. Just what everybody wants, more email. But it's all right there. <laughs> just just make a special just make yeah. a special email address. Sure. Oh. So it's just your sports. <laughs> so for Mike Smith and for John Halley, our special guests here today for the Pickaway County special edition of Litter Media Live, I'm Dan Ramey. We'll see you soon on a sporting uh, ground somewhere. Yes. Uh, of some sort. Thanks for watching.